Okay, so we have seen how uh, if you have a uh, an ordinary point, you know, there's a differential equation, and if you consider an ordinary point and look for a power series expansion about an ordinary point, so there is a you know region of convergence in which this series is guaranteed to converge, and you're going to have two independent solutions, right? So this is the statement of a theorem which we you know, just became familiar of, and we'll looked at a concrete example of how this plays out. So in this lecture, we will look at how, you know, there are certain kinds of singular points. Not all singular points are terrible singularities. You know, there are relatively benign singularities which are called, you know, regular singular points. If you have singular points which are, you know, regular in nature, we will discuss what that means. Then it, it is still possible to come up with a valid power series expansion, right? And, and the method associated with this goes by the name of the Frobenius method, which also we will discuss in this lecture. Okay, so yeah, so the differential equation we are looking at is, you know, which can be brought into the standard form is d squared y by dx squared plus p1 of x dy by dx plus p2 of x times y equal to 0. Suppose x0 is some singular point. So the question is, will we be able to do a power series solution, we'll be able to find a valid power series solution, you know, if you were to do an expansion about such a singular point. Well, it turns out that if such a, if this point is a regular singular point, right, then it will be possible. So, what is a regular singular point? So, as far as this differential equation is concerned, it would be called a regular singular point if, you know, x minus x naught times p1 of x and x minus x naught the whole square times p2 of x if you were to multiply just by x minus x naught the first function and multiply by x minus x naught squared the second function, you should be able to heal it of the singularity. If you know both these functions become analytic at at x naught, you know, then it's it's called a, a it's a singular uh, point, all right, but it's a regular singular point, right? So this is a special class of differential equation. And now there is this theorem which says that if this is true, then you can you can get a at least one non-trivial power solution of this form, right? So in fact, you know it, it's possible to say more and get an or uh, an independent another solution as well. But that's uh, you know those are some details which would be involve going a bit too far. So we will look at you know just this very sort of bare statement. So there is at least one power series solution of this form. What you have to do is you know, take the same kind of power series solution which we had before, but you'll have to tag it along with a product mod of x minus x naught, the whole power r, right? So this r is something that we have to evaluate, right? It will not hold for any r, but you will be able to find an r such that you multiply by this. So this is the part which makes it singular in some sense, right? So it's like a peeling off of the singularity. There is a way to do this in such a way that your function is you know, it's convergent in some deleted interval, right? So at x0, of course, the series will will uh, will not converge. It will diverge at x, x, x equal to x0, but, you know, arbitrarily close to it, you will be able to find a, a power series solution which is convergent. That's the statement of this theorem, right? So we will, again, not bother, you know, too much about the details of you know, this statement, but we will just use it as, you know, something which, on the backdrop of which we can do a calculation. Well, we'll look at a concrete example and see how this plays out. So the method to find the solution is called the Frobenius method, right? So the theorem is, you know, just tells you that if you, there is a solution and then you have to find it, right? So the Frobenius method is best illustrated with the help of an example. So let's look at a concrete example. So we have this differential equation, which looks very simple, right? So it's remarkable how, you know, such very simple looking differential equations, the homogeneous differential equation, you know, the functions involved also seem rather simple. And yet there is a lot of, um, you know, technique involved even with such simple differential equation. So if you wish to find a solution to this problem, so if at x equal to uh, 0, of course, there is a problem, right? So this is a singularity, there is a singularity at x equal to 0. And but luckily it's a it's a regular singular point why is that so we can check p1 of x 
if you were to bring it in the standard form, it will be minus 1 over 2x and p2 of x will be x minus 5 divided by 2x, x squared. So if you multiply p1 with x, it becomes minus 1 over 2, which is, you know, it's a happy function. p2 of x, if you multiply by x squared, then you, you know, you cure it of this singularity of order 2, which is there, uh, you know, there's a, you know, pole of order 2 as it is called. So anyway, so you are able to cure it of the singularity by multiplying by x squared, so which becomes x minus 5 by 2, which is a polynomial on the right hand side. So therefore, both are analytic at x equal to 0 and thus we conclude that x equal to 0 is a regular singular point. So if we are, you know, trying to do a power series expansion about uh, about a regular singular point, so the theory tells us that we must look for a solution of this form, right. We have to multiply throughout, you know, take a regular uh, power series uh, on dots like cn times x to the n, but multiply throughout by some x to the r, right. What is r is something which needs to be determined. We will see how to go, how to find it. So in this case, it will just become x to the n plus r, right. So r in general can even be a complex number, right. But in our case, we will see that it is some real number for the concrete example that we are looking at. But it is just a remark which I am making that in general it can be a complex number and there is a lot of sophisticated theory around it. But we will content ourselves with looking at you know a simple concrete example of how this plays out. So we differentiate it as usual, right. So convergence is guaranteed in some you know deleted interval and so differentiation term by term will work out. So then summation over n n plus r times c n times x to the n plus r minus 1. Then if you take a derivative once again, so you get n plus r times n plus r minus 1 times c n x to the n plus r minus 2 and this also needs to be summed over all the way from 0 to infinity. Now if you plug back these two uh, expressions and the first one, all these three expressions back into the original differential equation, then you have you know 2 times, so it is just 2 x squared, so x 2 times x squared you know will give me back x to the n, n plus r, then I have uh, x times dy by dx minus x times dy by dx, so that again will give me back x to the n plus r, then I have plus x minus phi, so I can separate this out and write you know just the x part first and then the minus phi part, so when I do x times uh, 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 x times y, so I will get n plus r plus 1 and then when I do minus phi that will just give me x to the n plus r. So I have all these terms, they add up to 0, right. So now there is a lot of, you know, rearranging and some simple algebra connecting together and bringing things into a, a convenient form, right. So what we do is first of all write 2 n, n plus r times n, n plus r minus 1 minus n plus r minus phi, all of this, you know, uh, you know, is multiplied by cn times x to the n plus r, so it is conveniently brought together. And then I have also this, uh, so this is not minus, this is a plus, so there is a plus. So instead of writing it as Cn times x to the n plus r plus 1, I can write it as, you know, I can make this standard transformation n plus 1 is equal to k, so then it will become, uh, you know, k plus r, c, uh, k minus 1, uh, so, so which is, uh, uh, you know, where the k will now go from 1 to infinity and then in place of k I put back n, so I have n going from 1 to infinity, c n minus 1 x to the n plus r. So I have everything now in terms of this n, x to the n plus r, but the first of these is going all the way from 0 to infinity, whereas the second one is going from 1 to infinity. So what I will do is I will pull out all the stuff involving just 0 and write it, you know, first and then I have another summation involving, uh, you know, which where the summation goes all the way from 1 to infinity. So the 0 term will be just, so when I put n equal to 0, I get 2 into r into r minus 1 minus r minus phi times 0, 0 times x to the r, right. So this whole stuff is, you know, it corresponds to just x to the r. There is a coefficient times x to the r and then I have a summation over n, you know, where I have x to the n plus r here and this coefficient just is just all of this stuff plus also cn minus 1. Right, so it's fairly straightforward, and as usual, we have we demand that you know term by term, this is going to be zero for this to hold since it holds for any value of x, and so the first thing we do here is you know this is 
where the slight deviation comes from the previous type of method which we were where we were looking at you know such power series expansion about an ordinary point so if you're doing it about a regular singular point you must you know first solve for what is called the initial equation after all we don't know what r is right so that in fact is solved here so assuming that the c naught is not zero it is this guy which has to be zero right because you know coefficient this entire coefficient must go to zero so that this that means 2 r squared minus 3 r minus 5 must be equal to 0 right so this is called the initial equation if we solve for this you know we will we will come to know what are the values of r where for which this kind of a thing power series can be a solution it turns out that you know you will have a quadratic equation because we are dealing with a second order differential equation so of this kind so you will get a quadratic equation which in general can have roots which are complex but in our case we will have um, I mean the, the particular example that we are considering is a rather simple one. So here we will see that in fact r uh, you know there are two roots r1 is equal to 5 by 2 and r2 is equal to minus 1 right. So both are real roots. So there is quite some theory uh, around you know what happens if you know the roots are repeated roots and if the roots happen to be complex one of them will be you know the, the two will be conjugate to each other and how the solutions will play out and so on. We will not get into these details and also there is some theory about you know how what happens if you know r1 and r2 are both real but if the difference between them is a is an integer or not and so on right. So there is some subtleties involved as far as you know we have this statement about how the theorem tells you that there is at least one non-trivial solution but you will actually be able to find two independent solutions. So you, sometimes you may have to work with what is called a you know logarithmic singularity has to be put in and so on. So we will not go into those details at this point. So we will just work with this very concrete example where things are quite simple and in fact we will get two linearly independent solutions here. One corresponding to R1 and the other corresponding to R2. Okay, so how do we, what is the machinery here? So we will first use R1 as the root and then we will use R2 as the root and then work out this uh, recurrence relation right. So the recurrence relation comes from the next terms for n greater than or equal to 1 we see that 2 times n plus r times n plus r minus 1 minus n plus r minus 5 times c n plus c n minus 1 must be equal to 0 for n greater than or equal to 1. If I you know uh, look at uh, the first solution first root r1 equal to 5 by 2 then we have 2 times n plus 5 by 2 times n plus 3 by 2 minus n plus 5 by 2 minus 5 times cn all thing times cn plus cn minus 1 equal to 0 which immediately you can simplify this it will lead to just 2n squared plus 7n times cn plus cn minus 1 equal to 0 or equivalently you can actually go ahead and write cn as minus cn minus 1 divided by n times 2n plus 1 for n greater than or equal to 1. So since you know C0, so if you know C0, you can work out C1, from C1 you can get to C2 and so on. So let's put C0 equal to 1 for simplicity here, right. So we are looking at the general solution. So you will see later on that, uh, you know, we will bring in these free constants later on. We will work out two independent solutions, you know, putting C0 equal to 1 in each of them and then we will take some arbitrary linear combination of these two will also be a solution of the, will be the general solution. So if you put C0 equal to 1, then we get C1 according to this relation is minus 1 over 9. C2 is minus C1 by 22, which in turn can be written, you know, because C1 itself is known, it will go, go to 1 over 198. C3 again you write it in terms of minus C2 divided by 39 according to this relation. And then but C2 is known, so therefore you just plug it in and then you get alternating signs as you can see. One of them is going to be positive, the next is negative and so on. So this is a going to result in a power series solution which we will denote y1 to say that it's it's the first root that we are you know this corresponds to so y1 is x to the 5 by 2 right so you can pull out that factor x to the r which is x to the 5 by 2 in this case times 1 minus 1 over 9 times x plus 1 over uh, 98 times x squared minus you know this stuff times x cube so on right so there is a you know it's basically like a power series but you have this extra factor which is sitting here right so uh, 
so it's a you know it's a device by which you have somehow peeled off just the right factor such that you can still have a convergent power series in the vicinity of your regular singular point and likewise we can also work out the series solution corresponding to the second row so now if you plug in r2 equal to minus 1 so then we have the recurrence relation to be 2 times n minus 1 times n minus 2 minus n minus 1 minus 5 times cn plus cn minus 1 equal to 0 you rearrange all this you know a lot of simplifications will come about and you can show that in fact cn is now minus cn minus 1 divided by n times 2n minus 7 earlier we had 2n plus 7 so now you have 2n minus 7 for n greater than or equal to 1 again we can you know put c naught equal to 1 and write down the first few coefficients c1 will turn out to be just 1 over 5 you can check this it's just plugging in 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 this formula so c2 can be written in terms of c1 which is already given to be 1 over 5 so you get c2 to be 1 over 30 c3 will turn out to be 1 over 90 and then your negative terms will start after that right you can check here first you know c1 c2 c3 all the way up to c3 are all positive because you see that you have a 2n minus 7 and n is not sufficiently large but once n becomes large you will start getting negative terms as well but let's stop here and uh, look at you know just the uh, you know just a representative set of terms and we will not look at higher order terms. So, we have y2 is equal to 1 over x. So, there is this factor x to the minus 1 which comes out, right? That is the, you know, that is how you, it is a benign singularity. You can precisely sort of, uh, uh, you know, it is a concrete uh, understanding of the nature of the singularity itself comes out in this solution. It is 1 over x which comes out outside and then you have a, a series which converges. So, as long as you are not precisely at x equal to 0 in some interval around it, it is a convergent series, right? So once again, you can worry about you know how far this will spread out, what is the radius of convergence and all, but which are all a matter of detail, which we will not go into here. So we have thus found two linearly independent solutions. One of them we called y1, and the second one is y2, which is x to the minus 1 times 1 plus 1 over 5 x plus 1 over 30 times x squared plus 1 over 90 times x cube plus so on. So it will give you some negative terms, right? You can, if you wish, look at a few more terms. But the key point is that we have two independent power series which are both convergent in some deleted neighborhood around the regular singular point and we can tie them together you know you can bring in arbitrary coefficient c1 uh, you know tag it along with y1 and c2 along y2 uh, with y2 and write down the general solution as c1 y1 plus c2 y2 after all it's a second order differential equation so indeed you will expect two free constants which is what we find. So, in this lecture, we have seen a demonstration of how if your singular point is benign and specifically if it is what is called a regular singular point, then it is still possible to you know look for a, a power series solution around this point in some deleted neighborhood. At that point itself, you, you, you do not have a solution, but in the neighborhood of that point, in a deleted neighborhood of that point, there is going to be at least one non-trivial, you know, power series solution you can find and, you know, there is more sophisticated theory of, about how, you know, these initial equations works out, what happens if you have more complicated roots and so on, which we have not gone into the details, but hopefully with this example, we have got a flavor for, you know, the type of ideas which, you know, which go into finding solutions. Some of these get used when we look at, uh, you know, things like Bessel function, you know, th there are standard uh, special functions, lots of uh, special functions are connected to these kinds of series solutions, but, you know, hopefully we have got a flavor for this technique in this discussion. Okay, that is all for this lecture. Thank you.